In this video, we're looking at how we can get all the data from the current workbook. As people, we like to pre-categorize data. For example, we might have a January tab, a February tab, and a March tab on our workbook. But these all tend to contain the same types of data. When it comes to analyze them, we want to bring them all together into a single table for analysis. So the methods that we're going to look at are really useful for these types of scenario. So if you're ready, let's get started. If you want to work along with this video, you can download the example file and there's a link in the descriptions box below. In that workbook, we have three tabs, all containing sales data, but each of those tabs contains different months for January, February, and for March. And our goal is to combine all of these together inside a single query. To understand this, let's just start by loading one table into Power Query. So I'll select the January tab, select a cell inside the table, and then go to data from table slash range. The change the type step has been automatically applied, so I'll just delete that one. And then let's have a look at the source step. What does this code in the formula bar actually mean? It uses a function called excel.currentworkbook. It then filters that current workbook from item that is named TBL January. And then finally, it drills into that item. Now that we understand how those three elements work, Hopefully it's clear that we should be able to use the excel.currentworkbook function. I'm going to come over here into my queries pane, right click, go to new query, other sources, and then create a blank query. In there, I'm going to enter this function. So equals excel.currentworkbook. You need to be careful of the capitalization there. Make sure that the E of Excel, the C of current and the W of workbook are all capitals. I'll close that with brackets and then I'll press return. You can see in there that we have three tables called TBL January, TBL February and TBL March. They're the three items that we want. But we also have two other items, one called My Named Range and then also a print area. We want to combine the first three, but not the last two. So let's start by filtering out the objects that we don't want. So I right click on my named range, text filters, does not equal. I'll do the same for the January print area. We can now click on the expand icon. I don't want the original name as a column prefix. And then I can click OK. Perfect. That's now loaded each of those into this query. Now we don't need the name column, so I'll select that, press the delete key to remove it, and then let's apply our data types. I'll select the first, hold shift, click on the last, go to transform, detect data type. Let's check through these, so date time should be a date. Place that current step. Customer product sold by can all be text. And let's just change our value to currency for this example. And I'll replace that current step too. Finally, let's name our query. I'll call it combined table. And let's close and load these into Excel. I've got two queries here. I don't want to load both of them. So I'm going to go to close and load two. Select to only create a connection. And then click OK. I'll then right click on my combined table, go to load two, and just change that one so that it loads as a table on a new worksheet. And then I'll click OK. Perfect, we have 151 rows loaded. We can see our data in there. Now let's say our data then changes and updates and we come along and we click refresh. And now we've got 301 rows, we've now got 451 rows. What's happening? We haven't changed our data, but yet the number of rows appears to be increasing each time that we click refresh. Well, in designing this query, we actually created a problem for ourselves. Let's head back into the Power Query Editor and you'll see what the issue is. 
So in the Queries and Connections pane, I'll double click on our combined table. There we go, the Power Query Editor has now opened up. Let's go to our Source step. Now initially, there doesn't appear to be any problem. But if we come to the Refresh Preview, you'll see that what's happened is that we've now got this item called Combined Table. And as we walk through our steps, you'll see that our Combined Table is not excluded from our range. So each time we take that combined table and then we stack on January, February, March again into a new combined table. And then we stack on more items and more items all into that combined table. So each time we click refresh, it's increasing in size. So there's a couple of ways we could deal with this. We could come across and text filter and then exclude our combined table. But actually a better method would be to make sure that we always have consistent naming conventions so that any tables that we want to combine inside this workbook always start with the letters TBL. And if we do that, instead of filtering out the items that we don't want, we can filter in the items that we do want. So let me delete the previous filtered rows one step. And then we will edit our other filtered row step. So here we said that we want it where it does not equal my named range. Instead, we want to include it where it begins with TBL. And I'll click OK. From that, you see our combined table has disappeared along with all the other items that we don't want. And as we click through our changes, all of that works fine. And then we can close and load that back into Excel. And now when we click refresh, there's no issues, we get the correct rows loading every time. If you're using this method of Excel.CurrentWorkbook, you'll notice that Power Query can handle two different data objects. It can deal with tables and it can deal with named ranges. Now you might be wondering, where's from sheet? How do I pick up everything that's on the worksheet? Well, at present, Power Query doesn't have this feature at all. It's either tables or it's named ranges. Hopefully you've seen in this video that the most critical thing is making sure that we filter the items correctly. If we get that filter right, it makes sure that we only include the items that we want in our final query. Well, hopefully you found this video useful. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you next time.